Hello. Hi everyone. Just waiting for a few people to join. We're going to go live today with uh, Kayla Doyle. So, just waiting for a few people to join. Hello. Hi, thanks for joining. Ooh, getting a few followers. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to be uh, joined by Kayla soon um, and we're going to be talking today about um, catering for skin of colour in your salon and how to have a treatment menu that really makes sure that you're catering for all client groups. So we're just going to um, get Kayla with us soon. Thanks for joining us today. There's lots of people popping up, which is fab to see. So thank you. I think it should be a popular topic. So we should have Kayla with us quite soon. So Kayla is the CEO of My Beauty Squad, which if you don't know it, I'll let her talk a bit about it when she joins us. But um, it's basically a, um, a mobile service for beauty therapists. Um, and they've got over 120 therapists actually on their books, freelancers who um, work across London, Birmingham, Dublin and Cork. So pretty prolific across the UK and Ireland. So ah, I can see my beauty squad is watching. So Kayla, if that's you, we just need you to request to join and I'll bring you into the live. Let's see, maybe I can do this. Kayla, I've just added you in, so hopefully you've got a notification from me that you can accept to uh, Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm sorry, I was waiting for the request to join and it just popped up the last minute. Oh, no, no worries. I thought I was thinking you would request to join, but I requested you, so we're all good. We're both here. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Fab, I'm really good, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm really excited. I love um, everything that you're saying. I'm getting excited for people to actually hear everything that we have to talk about today. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it'll be a really popular topic. I think really current and I think it's great for people to kind of hear a bit about what you do and your experiences, but also how you have built such an inclusive business. Yeah. So I guess initially it'd be great if you could tell us a little bit more about My Beauty Squad. I gave a very quick intro, but for, for you to tell us in your own words really about the business and what it does, to, so you yeah. know a bit more about you. Yeah, so um, My Beauty Squad is, a, is an app. It started as a mobile beauty app. Um, but it, for me, it's much more, you know, what I want to build is much more than that. So I just want to like a community of women that can, you know, that you can go somewhere to feel comfortable, get honest advice. So in the beginning, I never thought that My Beauty Squad did grow so much to what it is today. And it's just becoming like what I really want it to be. Just you can go there for mobile beauty, but most of all, it's a place that you can come and feel comfortable and book appointments and listen to advice and just, you know, have your me time with us. So we, we say like we're beauty and a brand and mobile beauty and a brand all together. Excellent. Yes, it's your beauty Bible. Perfect. And you operate now, is it it's four cities that you're mainly operating in, isn't it? Yes, we are in Cork, Dublin, London and Birmingham. Excellent. Amazing. So I suppose obviously today we're going to be talking a bit about making sure that your treatment menu is inclusive and catering for BAME clients and making sure that you have um, the services on there that, that people want and also that your messaging is, is right for all client types. Um, but can you tell us a bit about um, your experiences because you had that in mind really when you were launching my beauty squad didn't you you wanted to make sure it was an inclusive business so what kind of led you to that and what made you sort of set that up with that in mind yeah so definitely um to give a little bit of a background i'm from rio brazil and when i worked there there is no such a thing as going to a salon and the hairdresser and say oh i cannot do your hair it really learn with all types of hair and when i moved here um in the uk because of my husband who's irish uh, when i got married in Ireland, in ireland first place was a struggle to find someone and um, that wanted to do my hair because they're like oh you have afro hair and here in london that is, is such a like a cosmopolitan city and i had the same experiences i would go to salons and people would give me looks and if i had my hair blow dried so many times they would ask me oh but how's your hair after it's wet 
And that made me feel really like, oh my God, I don't belong or people don't want to have me here. It, 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 instead of being like a time for me to feel good about myself, mm -hmm. I kind of retract. It's like, oh, I don't want to go to the salon anymore. I want to do everything at home because every time I go, I have a problem. And that inspired me to create an environment within my beauty squares that you feel comfortable whoever you are. So if you're a cross-dresser, my beauty squad is the only company that provides um, cross-dresser makeup. If you are dark, you have dark skin and you have Afro hair, my beauty squad will have makeup artists that can do your skin and that can do your hair and you never it will be made feel as if you don't belong or if you have the wrong type of hair for the environment. Yeah, that's really interesting because as you say, you want to go somewhere where you feel you're going to an expert. You don't want them asking you how they should do your hair or how they should treat your skin. So that's really interesting that that's the kind of experience that you were having and it really shouldn't be that way. So Yeah. Yeah. So I suppose, and with that in mind, when you did launch, what were the key things that you wanted to make sure that you did, I suppose, to make sure that you were um, a bit being welcoming and, and treating everybody? Were there sort of certain services that you added on your menu or is it more about training or, or what kind of mm -hmm. things did you set up today um it's about to make clear to your team to your salon to whatever business you have really that if you want to be the best in your field um and if you want to do something i think everybody that is in beauty it's because we love what we do i think beauty is such a job of love you know you're going you're doing someone's hair you're doing someone's makeup because we literally you know love what we do so if you love your job you need to to try and be the best at it and you need to try to accommodate as many skin tones as you can as many hair types as you can um i think for you to achieve that you need to transmit to your team so hey i have this salon um you know i have this app i want to make sure that when i hire someone and uh, you were trained to do everything every single hair type so when someone comes to my business are the ones you know to say oh my my team they cannot do your hair type or they cannot do your skin tone because that's not fair, you know, it, it makes people feel small. So it starts from the owner of the business and it starts from every single makeup artist and hairstylist, you know, as well. You need to, you must learn how to do all skin tones if you truly want to be uh, a true excellent good professional. Excellent. So it's a lot about the recruitment process and what sort of therapists you, you look for and the experiences they have. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I suppose if salon owners with an existing business and an existing um, bank of, of staff, if they're looking to make their treatment menus a bit more inclusive and make sure that they are catering for, for all skin tones and all client types, what, where should they start in terms of looking at the services? Are there certain services perhaps that a lot of salons miss out on or, um, or, don't, or their therapists aren't fully trained in? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think people of color um, spend a lot of money. You know, I, I spend a lot of money on my hair. I say all the time on our Instagram um, how much you need to take care of when you have Afro hair to make sure it grows, to make sure it stays um, hydrated and everything. So if you have a salon and you want to open um, your treatment service for, for more people and more ethnicities, you start by hiring a person of color to help you or someone that has this expertise to, to guide you, oh, which services um, are popular in my area? Do your research as well. Is it braiding? Is it weaves? Is it uh, relaxing? Is it blow dries? Um, it starts by researching your, in your field what you think is going to be more popular and experimenting the services as well to see what's going to work because there's no point if you try to jump all the way from, from doing you know, blow dries to want to do weaves if like this is not what people are looking for in your area. But it might be that someone wants a, an Afro hair blow dry, you know, and they don't need to travel to another areas to get it. And then you can start by adding that to your salon little by little. And once you get your customers, um, your people of color, you can ask them what they want to see next. So the main thing is just like hiring someone that can guide you and help you or mm -hmm. even, you know, asking for expertise, having like consultant and kind of experiment as you go with your customers that you get and listen to them and listen to what they want from you because they definitely tell you. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. And what about, I suppose, um, skincare in particular? Because most of our followers and viewers will be more on the, the beauty side than the hair side. So are there any mm -hmm. tips um, for skincare in terms of 
looking at perhaps um, treatments that you might not have thought of on your menu or brands to work with or kind of just making sure that you've got your offer right in terms of the actual services side mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. I think um, skincare, it's a, it's a difficult one because it, we, each skin is, is different. It's hard to generalize, but it's definitely, you know, I find um, darker skin. We have more melanin, so it's easier to take care of it. Um, of course, SPF every day. But if you want to add, you know, uh, a menu for your your the, for the people of color in your business, maybe start with hydrating because, you know, um, we could like do more hydration facials or something for dark skin and focus on dark skin owned beauty brands as well. Do your research in the area. But to be honest, I don't think it differentiates much in skincare between, you know, being dark or being light. It's more um, your skin type really from person to person, from normal to oily to dry. So it really, it really depends. With skincare, it's really different the skin type. It's not much of the color itself. Sure. But as you say, um, so it's it's quite important then to just be talking to your clients and be talking to other people of colour to get some feedback on what you can do as a salon owner to maybe start to, to make your menu more inclusive. Um, and with that in mind, do you have any advice in terms of the marketing and the messaging that you put out as a salon or as a, a therapist? Is there um, things that you see people get wrong or just things that you think would help in order to make your salon seem open and, and welcoming to, to all types of people? And all, all yeah, definitely. Uh, there are so many things. <laughs> definitely. I think, first of all, make people feel included. Don't create, oh, this is the menu for normal people and this is the Afro menu. I feel that like I once went to a salon and they gave me a menu and the girl was like, oh, that's not for you. That's your, and I was like, oh, Jesus, I cannot see this menu. So I felt really like, oh, take him back. So make sure you have one menu for everyone and make sure, you know, j just because someone has Afro hair or curly hair doesn't mean that they are completely, like, they don't deserve the same treatment. So make sure you're quite partial um, in making everybody feel included. And then same in your marketing, use people of color in your market marketing, do videos with different hair types. Um, if you use social media to promote your salon, don't use only one hair type. That's something that I see a lot. So if you want to show that you are talented, show that you can work with all hair types, show what you can do with Afro hair, with curly hair, with curly hair, with straight hair. And this will help you to gain customers from, from all backgrounds. So it's all about advertising and use, you know, all ethnicities and not do only one type of customers, which I see everywhere. And mm -hmm. it's only good for your business as well. You are bringing a whole new clientele and more women to your, to your space. So you should be promoting different types and different women and different hairs and telling your team to, to work with that as well and showing what you can do as well. Absolutely. Okay. So I think um, partly having that imagery, right? I think that's something that we've, we've spoken about quite a bit and we, we've seen brands do a lot more of recently. And I think yeah. that's which can only be a good thing to make sure that you're really reflecting every type of client that you might receive or that you'd like to receive in your business, in your, in your marketing, in your imagery. Yes, absolutely. And also what about, um, do you think sometimes it's a confidence thing? Cause I think um, there are therapists who perhaps most of their clients um, are white or are, you know, fit into a certain bracket, you know, that's the majority of their clients that they'll see. So they don't necessarily feel as confident working with different skin types and, and different ethnicities. Do you think that there is more um, therapists could do to train or, or to kind of boost their confidence in these areas? I think, um, as you've touched on, everybody should be able to treat every type of client that they might come into contact with. But I think some salon owners do feedback that it can sometimes be a bit of a confidence issue. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. I think this starts as well um, with the makeup schools and training them with different models. Um, we am a beauty squad. Um, Sabrina, who is always um, head, she's our general manager, and she does all the hiring for my beauty squad. We never hire someone that cannot do all these skin stones. And so many times, Sabrina been through the process, and people would be, oh, I can only do Caucasian skin, but that's not. It's not their fault. Everything starts with the school. So the makeup schools and the beauty schools need to have um, different models that people can train on. Um, as a beautician, you know, if you're starting, you don't know, you know, you are given that model on. And then when you go to market, 
um, you can only work with that model, but the way you can do to improve that as well, there are so many platforms that you can collaborate with um, models, people of color. And then if you're a new makeup artist or a new hairdresser, any new professional, you can, you know, you know, message someone and say, can we collaborate together? Can I train on your skin in exchange for photos? And you need to put an effort yourself to be able to learn in all skin tones. Mm -hmm. And this will only be good for your career, really, I think. But it's, it's a deeper problem because it starts from the very root of it, which is the schools. So we need to tell the schools to add um, models of color, Afro hair, everything because otherwise how people are going to learn you know you go there for guidance and then if their guidance only includes one skin tone how you know what you're going to do so we need to start from the schools sure okay definitely so do you think um if schools or if salons are looking to kind of make links with people as you say to maybe speak to BAME people to get some advice and get some guidance where um could they start to do that are there kind of um is it, is it a case of perhaps seeking out individuals like yourself or people who are working in the industry who can guide them? Or are there kind of any platforms you can recommend or, or places they can start if they want to start looking? Amazing. I think this conversation is only starting now, very late. In 2020 is the first time that I actually see finally this conversation happening. And you need to reach out to the leaders in this field, to people that of color that are working in beauty, uh, feel free to message me if you want to message me to ask um, for advice for a salon or anything because I definitely help. But these conversations are starting now. And if you want to change, if you want to change your business and, you know, you have no idea. For example, I if I want to know something about Asian makeup, I will reach out to my Asian friends and ask for advice. So reach out to your black friends. Reach out um, to your friends that has a big curly hair that she takes hours to blow dry and ask her for advice, ask her what you can do to improve each product um, you should use, uh, which kind of um, hair brush you should buy, which foundations are better uh, for our skin tone. Um, so I think it's just reaching out to people. I don't think there is a platform yet that you know we can do that because we only started this conversation, unfortunately. But I sure think that through social media, you know, doing your research and checking black owned business and black um, stylists, you can do you can do something quite easily to change this and asking people for advice excellent yeah and i think um, even just as a business through professional beauty we've done quite a lot of webinars recently so also if people are interested it's worth uh, exactly. taking a look back and, and some of the webinars we've done um, on treating different skin types and and colors and um on, on making your business more inclusive so if you look at professionalbeauty.co.uk sorry forward slash webinars there's a few on there to get you started yeah. But yeah, absolutely. I think it's about um, about having the conversations and making sure that people are thinking along these lines and starting to educate themselves as much as anything. Um, and I wanted to touch a little bit on the wider beauty industry. So I suppose beyond um, salon owners and, and what steps they can take for their treatment menus, what about... Um, steps to to improve inclusivity on a larger scale, I suppose, um, through suppliers, through brands, through um, employment opportunities in the industry. Are there any um, kind of steps you feel need to be taken at the moment to, to address these issues? Um, this is a very difficult, I, I mentioned that in a previous um, conversation that I had, is a very difficult issue um, to address because the opportunities at the moment are not the same. So if you are a person of color that didn't have the same education, the same university opportunities, um, the same structure that a, a white person, a middle class white person um, might have, and how are you going to compete? So I think you need to start at the very bottom of our system where people offer equal opportunities growing up and we call courses. And the way you can do this is by, you know, in each sector, give opportunity for someone that might not have the experience that you want them to have, but they might have the will. Um, I'm the kind, I say that for myself. I, you know, I never went to university and sometimes I felt down about not having the most amazing CV as some other candidates would have, but something that I really have is will. I will work harder than anyone else, but all the time we will find really difficult um, to get the opportunity there. And I think it starts from companies from every sector, you know, 
of course, I think most of the time, a person of color won't have as an amazing CV as a white person that had all the opportunities. And then, you know, I have friends in recruitment that if they see that the name of the person has, you know, has an Afro surname, they would be like, oh, no, this person, no. And then she told me that that's really real. And, uh, and the way to change this is from all sectors. Maybe, you know, you won't get the most on paper prepared candidates, but be willing to give them a chance. And then there are a lot of diamonds out there that if you give them a chance, they will wow you if, like, with the willingness to learn, with the, with the work ethic. There are a lot of diamonds out there that, that if you give them a chance, they will wow you. So I think from all sectors, people need to be willing to, to recognize, okay, they might, not have, they might not have the same opportunity that I had, but I need to give them a chance. So we start balancing the, the books. And at the same time, um, the black people on the top, they need to open the doors um, for the black people at the bottom. I think it, needs to, it starts like a little chain of people helping people because what happens as well, sometimes people are at the top and they forget about everyone else. So you need to pave your way to others, um, black and white. We all need to kind of help each other out to, to start equalizing, trying to equalize the system. But it's a very difficult problem that everybody in all sectors, we all need to work together to solve this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a very good point. I think um, the beauty industry has certainly been making positive steps in, in recent years. And um, but it is it's that case of kind of, as you say, having people within your business who can guide you and advise you on how to do that as much as anything. And just making sure that you are kind of having those conversations and hearing those voices. So that's an interesting, interesting one to, mm. to work on. And um, I guess going back to the salon sector, I suppose, because most people who are, who are watching and, and interacting with us today are salon owners or therapists who are perhaps thinking about um, ways in which that they may not have made people feel inclusive over the years and, and trying to avoid that. Um, and we've had a couple of comments as we've gone along about, um, about treating skin and about um, the role. A couple of people have said that melanin also plays a role in the way that skin should be treated as well as just skin types. Now, is there um, kind of more training, I suppose, that people might be able to do in that? Or are there ways that people could maybe look at making sure their treatment menu recognises that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I think it goes back to what we talk about the beauty schools um, by adding that and by adding um, topics about melanin and have um, the students work with people of color as well and um, and seeing what works um, um, darker skin tones. I think it all goes down to training. Training is always the main thing and including different models um, is always the, the way for us to treat all the skin correctly. And I think studying, I think a lot of people nowadays, they want everything very quick, maybe it's time to take a step back and study and study black culture and black skin and black hair and how you can, you know, improve your skills in that sector. Um, even if you're a facialist or a hairdresser, makeup artist, everything, I think it's time to take a step back and go back to the drawing boards and study and see how you can be the best, you know, in your field uh, for people of color as well. Absolutely. So as you could have touched on, if if the standard training that you're doing is not really touching on that, it's about seeking out those those opportunities and those courses and educating yourself as well and making sure that you kind of take individual responsibility, I suppose, to make sure that you know. Exactly. And one thing I think is always pick up if you're doing a makeup course or a hair, a beauty, any course, if you're in college right now, and you see there are no uh, models, there are no people of color as models for you to train, you speak up and say like, hi guys, so I'm doing this course, why are there no people of color for me to train? Because this will affect your career. You mm -hmm. know, so many people apply for my beauty squad and if they cannot do people of color, they don't get hired. But even though we know it's not their fault, it's their yeah. school. So I think people need to speak up a little more and just say, I want um, a model of color for my training. I want Afro hair for my training because I want to be a complete um, professional. Absolutely. And when you, that's interesting though, when you are hiring, what, um, what do you look for? Because also, um, obviously, as you've mentioned, you're absolutely determined that you have an, a really inclusive business. Um, so you need to make sure that everyone that's working with you has the same attitude and, and the same experience, you know, has that full range of experience. So how do you make sure that that is the case? What kind of questions do you ask? What kind of trade tests do you do? How do you, how do you make sure that the people working with you have that right? 
balance. Yeah, yeah. so um, we have a trade test where people will do the makeup and models, and sometimes on myself, which is nerve wracking for them. They get so nervous, but we make sure that <laughs> on the they feel comfortable. <laughs> and of course, if they don't pass, they can apply again in three months' time. It's not something that no, you never work for us. You just like we just tell you what you need to improve, and in three months' time, they can apply again. But it's a, a matter of having models. This is something anyone can do for their business, hire models, hire cross-dresser models as well, um, trans models, every, everyone that wants, you know, a transformation. You, there, are so, um, there is a website called You Start Now, and um, you can just type the kind of model that you want, and they will show you a list of people that you can hire. So this is a great way to, to kind of prove your business and make sure that, you know, you have artists and professionals that can do everyone. And this has been working amazingly from a beauty squad. And if someone doesn't know, you don't need to tell them, oh, you're, you're never going to work for us. You just tell them what they need to improve and they can come back. But it's a great way that works for us so much. It made our company grow so much. And it's the core of our business. I think every woman, doesn't matter who they are and where they're from, when you have a beauty time, you need to feel included. You need to feel that this is your time. We run as a woman. I think we rarely take time anyway. So I think when you book something, when you have a beauty treatment, you need to feel comfortable and feel that this is your time to feel special, mm -hmm. not your time to feel discriminated or feel like you don't belong or feel that you're bothering someone because they're, you know, having extra work with your hair. So this is really important. Yeah, absolutely. And as we touched on, to feel confident that they know what they're doing when they're treating you, that they have experience in treating your type of hair and your type of skin. Exactly. And that you enjoy what you're doing as well. I had people blow dry my hair and they were huffing and puffing before, like, oh my God. And I was like, I, I, was, I almost felt bad. And yeah. I don't even have lots of hair. I cannot even, and I have friends that have curly hair and they say the same. They're like, oh, I'd rather do my blow dry at home because when I go to the salon, they complain that their arms are hurting while they're doing a blow dry. And if the clients shouldn't feel like that, no. I think therapists should understand that sometimes the beauty time that the person is taking is the only time maybe in a month that they're taking for themselves or the only time, you know, that maybe they're, you know, depressed or something and they're looking for a boost. But if the therapist is just like, oh my God, I cannot do your hair or I'm feeling uncomfortable, you pass that to the client yeah. And yeah. I know because I've been through that so many times and it just feel like, so I feel like I'm bothering someone. I was like, oh, should I leave? And I'm like, leave it, leave it, leave it, do it the way you want. So that's why it's so important to yeah. remember to be inclusive. Yeah. And that's why we've, we've kind of touched on experience and confidence is so important in that, in that sense then, because it can come across, even if you don't intend it to, that you don't feel comfortable and confident. Exactly. Yeah, and if you don't feel confident, it's important to be honest as well. If you work in a salon and, you know, the owner just tells you to do something, just say, I'm not confident to doing it, and that's going to pass to your customers. So when I worked in a salon, I would say I'd rather not do it because mm -hmm. I don't want my customers to have that experience, and I want to improve as a professional so I can do all types of hair. So it's just a bit of a self-assessment as well. To, to realize what you can do and what do you want to learn. And it's so much fun because you have a array of hairs to work with, different stuff to do. It's so much fun. If you look, yeah, sorry. Ooh, sorry, we lost you there for a sec. <laughs> we got you back. The screen just froze a sec. Yeah. Um, we just had a question pop up actually, which is, can you recommend any brands, particularly on the beauty side? Can you recommend um, beauty brands that salon owners might want to consider to make sure that they are um, having the right brands in there to, to treat different skins, skins of color, but also um, brands that you feel might be helping in the industry to be kind of front runners in making sure that um, they are inclusive and their messaging is, is right. Yeah, so um, with brands, I think um, for Afro hair, I, I, I love so many, I don't even, I'm starting to think here how many I can name. I really like Sebastian Professional. They're not specifically an Afro brand now, but um, they're brands that their products are really based in protein. And this really helps Afro hair because I feel like Afro hair is really dry. My hair gets really, really dry really easily. And um, with the Afro hairs that I took care of, it's all ex uh, experience, especially if people are using weaves and wigs. Um, you need to make sure, and people just put it oil, 
all the time and the oil build up, you know, dead skin cells and, and dirt. So avoid, you know, plastering your, your customer's hair with oil for me is the first thing. And the second thing, brands, I think Sebastian Professional, um, the line Penetrate is really good um, for Afro hair. There's another brand called Avlon. A B L O N. They are Afro hair brands. They have amazing treatments as well. Um, I love this brand called Joico, J O I C O. And they have a treatment called K Pack, and it's amazing um, for Afro hair as well. Anyway, it's also protein based treatment. I think if you want to offer um, Afro hair treatments, go for protein based because. It will mm-hmm. nourish the hair and it, and will add moisture to Afro hair. It would be amazing. Fabulous. What what is there anything on the skin side or the more beauty side rather than hair that you? It's skin, yeah, it's skin side. I like to buy from black owned uh, beauty brands. For example, brands that I love is on the expensive side, but her products are amazing. It's Pet Magra um, Labs. Um, she's black, of course, and. Um, the products that she does, they are amazing for, for dark skin. They don't oxidize. They, they She has the only brands that goes with my skin tone. And there are um, black-owned beauty brands that we know how to do. There's another one called Uoma, U-O-M-A. And um, they do amazing foundations as well. So go for black-owned beauty brands if you buy makeup and skincare because they will specialize. You know, we wouldn't buy... Um, you know, food from someone that sells electricals normally. So always go for the the person that, you know, specialize in that field because you definitely get the best product. Fabulous. Okay, well, I think we've pretty much run out of time, Kayla, but that was so interesting. You've had tons <laughs> of uh, thumbs ups and, and, and waves and comments as we've gone along. So this is really useful and really, uh, really interesting. So thank yeah. you. Thank you, thanks to you, thank you for having me. This is really amazing. I think it's such an amazing topic to talk about, and it's amazing to have these conversations. Actually, it's amazing that this whole movement is happening. Definitely, definitely, and I think um, you know, as I've said, I think us as a company of professional beauty, and I think a lot of media outlets as well are. Um, making much more of an effort I think you know we'd like to think that we have always championed um, BAME business owners and salons but we're making more of a concerted effort to do so and I think you know it's it's good to see that across the board and it's lovely to to have these conversations and make sure that we really are addressing these issues and talking to to everybody and catering for catering for everybody out there definitely so thank you so much for joining us Kayla thank you thank you too thank everybody for joining and watching um Will, will people be able to watch it? Are you going to save the live? So we can yeah, so we'll save this. We'll post this to our Instagram grid so people will be able to watch it back there and uh, once we're done. Amazing, amazing. I tell Bye. everybody as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye guys.